Well, thank you for having me. I am so excited to be here. A little bit about me. Uh, again, my name is Anika Bell. I am the president of Celebrities Quality Painting Incorporated. Um, a little bit about me. I am a wife. I am the mother of three, 29, 26, and 18. And also the grandmother of an amazing three-year-old who starts school in a couple of weeks. <laughs> The life before now, I was a struggling single mother, um, just always had the vision to own my own business, didn't know what I wanted to, to do, but entrepreneurship has always been something that I wanted to be involved in. But because I had the children, I worked for the MTA, so I was a bus driver for 13 years until I was assaulted November 16th. 2011. And I think November 17th is when I started on my road to entrepreneurship. <laughs> so I was driving the bus as I normally did. And I always was an amazing looking bus driver. So people would always say, you do not belong here. Right. And, and I was in an urban community. I mean, gunshots every five minutes. Right. And so I was driving. I got to Webster Avenue, 167, which Webster Avenue is a really bad section of the Bronx. And a guy got on, he had a business suit on and he paid his fare with his Metro card. And so um, he hawk spit right in my face at that moment for no apparent reason. And then he walked off. And at that moment, I, my whole life changed because I was in shock. And I, but I knew that it was my time to leave because like I said, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. That's the first time I've ever heard God speak to me and say, here's your opportunity and what are you going to do with it? And once I heard that, everything changed. It was a game changer and here I am. So a little bit about my military life. I went into the military because like I said, I was a teenage mother and I wanted more for myself and my child at the time. And so I kept seeing the commercials and you could be all you could be. And so even though I did not go into the army, I went into the Navy where I could not swim, but I love a great challenge. And I hate it in my life. I hate to be afraid of anything. And so I went into the Navy because I was afraid of water. And I know for people that sounds so crazy, but um, that's how I lived my life. And so I went in and I didn't score high enough for the job that I wanted. I wanted to do air, air traffic control. And, but they said that I've, um, I received too many headaches in a year because I was honest on my application. And also I didn't score high enough on the ASVAB. So between those two, forget about it. But they was like, oh, don't give up. I mean, don't worry about it. You can try again later. Um, so I chose no job because I'm stubborn. I was like, if I can't do what I want, I'm doing nothing. So I ended up painting aircraft carriers. <laughs> and I looked at it like it was all hell. I hated it. I couldn't believe I was in the military painting, not knowing that that was the beginning of a blessing. Yeah, so um, I also love beauty, um, anything beauty. So I originally, after getting assaulted, um, I opened up my boutique. So I was in retail, selling clothes, eyelashes. I went back to school to understand skin. So I was a makeup artist. You know, I started doing celebrities. All that stuff was all well and good. However, it just still, I, I didn't find fulfillment, right? So I was like, it has to be something else. And I always knew that I was going to be successful um, from that moment, November 16, 2011, when I got assaulted, I knew that God had more for me, but I still didn't understand where did he want me. It just wasn't it until one day I received a phone call from a woman. The government hired these people to call women in business to ask them, like, why did they open these businesses and to let them know what the government was looking for. And so when she called me, she said, hey, tell me a little bit about myself. Tell I me mean, about yourself. And so I started telling her and she said, hey, what did you do in the military? I said, all I did was paint. And she said, why did you just say all you did was paint? Then she's the one that told me this is construction. She said, and the government is actually looking for women who have experience in construction because there's money set aside for, you are a minority, you're a veteran, you're a woman, like you check so many boxes. However, we don't have people, you know, like you to fit this. And that's why prime contractors are struggling to find, to fill these gaps. She said, why don't you consider it? But also keep in mind that you don't have to know everything. 
That's why you hire people. So why don't you open the business and you hire people to do the things that we need to get done? Huh? Oh my God. It was like, you think this hair is big? It got bigger because what she said <laughs> made so much sense because a lot of times we don't open businesses because, oh, I don't know anything about window cleaning. I don't know anything about um, flooring. You don't have to know. Yeah, you can take a, a class so you can have an idea, but you hire the people that have these years of experience and they're going to show you, right? They're going to be like, hey, we need this. We need that. You're like, all right. And you just do it. And so that's what started Celebrities Quality Painting, that woman who called me on that faithful day. Before I tell you, I'm going to say that so things take time, right? So it's not an immediate thing. I launched that business back July. The lady called me July 14th, 2018, and I um, incorporated the business July 16th, 2018. And now we're here in 2022. And my biggest project to date just happened this year, right? So if I would have given up, I would have never got to this point. And it's like, now that that project had happened, it started in January. We painted, uh, we won our first government contract um, and we painted the bus terminal. Now look at this. I'm back to buses. Remember, I got assaulted as a bus driver. And my biggest project was at a bus terminal in Broome County, New York. Now, come on, come on. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> that was from January to, um, well, they called me in January. We started in May and we, we concluded it four weeks ago now, three weeks ago, something like that. And I, that was the first time I had to get workers comp. First time I had to hire my employees, um, because I was, I had day laborers before because it was, you know, it was, I was just operating, but it wasn't a real business. Now I have my accountant, like all these things just happened for me. But, and then last week, we just concluded my second government contract. So you see how once it started, it took a long time, but now the ball is rolling. Woohoo! So the biggest challenge, which I know, I know what I'm about to say, everybody's going to say, like, we understand. Access to capital. Access to capital is the biggest challenge because, you know, growing up, I always heard these sayings, oh, it takes money to make money. You're like, okay. But only now am I realizing that it takes money to make money because especially in government contracting, they don't pay you until weeks, months afterwards. So all the materials, all the payroll, everything you need, you have to provide. And so I didn't really, I, I still, it was crazy until the... <laughs> I didn't really realize it until the first payroll was due and it was $10,000. And I'm like, what the heck? Right. And then, so I had to learn how to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And I had to reach out to people and ask. And that was the heart. I broke down in my car and I cried because I am not a person to ask people. But what it also did was it allowed me to see who was really, who I really was connected to. Right. And so, you know, me reaching out to the, and I couldn't reach out to one person for 10,000. Right? I mean, maybe I could have, but I wasn't there yet. So I just reached out to multiple people. And then until one of my girlfriends, who I just asked her for 3000 and she said, Nika, if you needed this money, why didn't you just ask me for the whole thing? And I was like, what? I would never, you know? And she was like, you didn't have, because I did a lot of running around to pick up the money, you know, and things like that. And because my, I thought my credit was good enough, but the banks didn't think so, you know? And this is the biggest project that I've ever worked on. So they look at my accounts, they like, honey, what where you think you're getting this much money from when you only had $10 and you need 10,000? You know what I mean? So just access to capital was the hardest um, for me. And it really broke me. It really broke me down, but I made it. And I made it. And actually yesterday I paid back one of, I call them investors, but $6,000. And just to be able to do that yesterday made me feel good. I want to share a story because I, I, I just want the people that's going to see this video to hear. It was me, the owner of the business in Broome County, just like I said, paid my employees, but I had no money, right? I had nothing really left. And I never thought that I would have to check myself into a seedy hotel. I mean, it was, I went to Walmart and bought long sleeve shirt so that, because I knew I had to sleep in the bed, but I, I, I cried again because th this situation really caused, broke me down. Um, and I cried because I looked at the window and I said, God, I would never thought that I would have to be in a seedy hotel in the hood. 
You know what I mean? Like, and just paid all these people thousands and thousands of dollars. But as the owner, I had nothing, you know? And so I really, 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 if you don't listen to me, if you don't hear anything I said, just hold on because I needed to be in that space. It, it gave me more empathy, right? So now when I ride by a, a CD hotel, you don't know who's in there. It could be the owner of any, you know, it's not just a homeless person or no, it's the owner of a business that just doesn't have the money because they they chose to pay their employees and not have them wait. You know, so I just wanted to share that before we hung up. But yeah. I'm saying the military really helped me with that, right? Because there's some things that we had to do. We like, what the heck? You know what I mean? But I, I'm so grateful for my experience because it really helped me and 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 shaped me for who I am today. Seriously. I am also a resource. Um, if anyone needs to reach out to me, my cell phone number, believe it or not, it's Publix. You can call me, 718-213-8446, or email me at celebritiesqualitypainting at gmail.com. Um, I just want people to know that you're not here in it by yourself. I'm here um, as a resource, and anybody that I can connect or help you you know, to get to where you want to be. I do not know everything, but I do know people that know everything <laughs> or a lot of things. So you can feel free to call me at any time before 11 p.m. <laughs> <laughs>